Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video today, we are going to be discussing and introducing the correlations between the Myers-Briggs assessment and the Enneagram. Why that is interesting and what it might mean to you. Hi, my name is Sandy Crocker and I am excited that you're here. If this is our first time meeting, welcome. First, let me let you know I'm going to be leaving all of the um, websites and references that I use in today's video down in the description below. Also for this video, I will be putting timestamps in the description so you'll be able to toggle around through the chapters and reference different sections at your leisure. So I'm starting off on the P PS Types blog spot. It's titled Enneagram and Myers-Briggs Types Correlations. I'm just going to read sh the short little ditty to introduce what we're talking about today. Although it was never possible to exclusively assign different Myers-Briggs type to certain Enneagram points, extensive research has proven that a statistically significant correlation does exist between the two typologies. Different studies proved somewhat different data, however there are many similarities among the results. So today we'll be focusing on the particular correlations that remain valid in a large number of cases. The following table reflects the research of many studies and theories revealed to us by different ac experts, and he mentions people such as Rizzo, Hudson, Wagel, and others. I put the Myers-Briggs types in order of their prevalence in each enneazone from left to right from each frequency group. So for instance, and there's a whole chart with the enneagram numbers 1 through 9. So for instance, I'm going to be focusing today specifically on fives, but they're all are nine he has listed all nine types in here as well. So for fives, introverted thinking and introverted intuition. Often, INTP, INTJ, ISTP, INFJ, and ISTJ. Sometimes, as INFP, ISFP, ENTJ, and then rarely. ESTJ, ENTP, ENFP, ENFJ, ESFJ, ISFJ, ESTP, and ESFP. Here's how I think that becomes fascinating, not just for myself and getting, trying to get to know myself better or not getting, trying to get to know others around me better or to, to learn how to better communicate with the people I work with or the, the family that I have or however we can use this in our everyday life. But what is also interesting is these two correlations between the Myers-Briggs and the Enneagram to me is how, um, how the mistypes can happen. This is what I like. He says, these correlation tables can be very useful when you're having some trouble deciding your type. Let's say you know your Enneagram point to be eight and you can't decide between ESFJ and ESTJ. According to the statistic, the odds are you're probably an ESTJ. This doesn't mean for 100% certain that you are, but that there are higher chances. That is what statistics can do for us. And that's what I love is, especially after the video that I'll link above that talked about the um, differences between the five wing four and the four wing five, and then several people coming through and saying, hey, I'm an INFJ, but do, that, does that match to a five or not? And all of these things, I think that's what statistics can do for us. It's just, it's just a starting place. There are, of course, exceptions. Yes, we could tear this apart. Um, and if you've got better references or better information than me, by all means, post it down below because we want to know about it. But the, the danger is, is that because some of these studies are relying on all of the data being accurate, therein lies the first problem, right? Is that that's assuming that I have typed myself correctly in my Enneagram and that I've been properly typed in my Myers-Briggs. So that goes without saying. Then you have who participates in these studies, right? I mean, we, we can go down the whole scientific um, research process to tear a lot of this apart. For me, it's just kind of a baseline. I'm not taking any of this to be exactly, you know, what is true or not true. And I'm certainly not here to tell anybody that they can't be this and this. It is just kind of a fascinating correlation that I thought I would share with you today. Uh, the author then goes on to cite um, some statistical survey data presented in the Enneagram Monthly, 
um, from several years back. And he's saying, like, for instance, you know, an Enneagram 4 is mostly an IN type. A 5 might be more of an IT type. Again, all of these interesting correlations. So that is in the description below. My next website that I'd like to share with you is from Typology Triad. It's a WordPress, um, and this gets really interesting. Um, this author has the Myers-Briggs Enneagram Big Five correlations, and then also actually goes into, okay, the Enneagram and Big Five connections, providing some data, MBTI and Enneagram correlations, does cite impossible Enneagram and Myers-Briggs combos. I think impossible is a very strong word, but they do. And then just for fun, also breaks down all of the any um, all of the Myers-Briggs common types common. So for instance, I'm an INTJ. I've tested that multiple times over the 40 years I've taken this test and every single time INTJ. So most common type, type five, it's 62%. Very usual though can be one, rare would be three, four, six, eight, and nine, and incompatible at two and seven, for instance. So if you have, if you know your Myers-Briggs and want to check out somehow some of the data does correlate back to your Enneagram number, this is a great place to start. Okay, the third reference point that we have seems to be one that has, um, the data has been being dropped into a lot of the groups that I've been in, and it cites back to Iliamona, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, Iliamona.com, it was a Master Personality Typology Survey Report. A correlation study was conducted to explore relationships between multiple popular personality typologies, MBTI, Enneagram, Big Five, Temperaments, Moral Alignment, Hogwarts Houses, Divergence Factions, Birth Order, Birth Order, not Birth Order, <laughs> Birth Order, and Zodiac. So if you want a nice little mix of all of the th different things that are out there, here is one of them. 3,491 participants completed a self-reported online survey. All typologies were found to be highly correlated with one another, with exception of birth order, likely to be confounded by other variables and zodiac, which showed no correlations. Very interesting. <laughs> it's funny, the tag at the top of this also says, how to human, which is kind of funny. All right, some of the correlations that they show, MBTI and Enneagram Thames trends, the type fives tend to be T dominant, types fours tend to be INFX, type fives tend to be INTX, um, and then it goes, talks more about the knee, fee, T, all of those. It breaks down MBTI um, Enneagram, um, cognitive functions, dominant functions, temperament trends, gets fun when it goes into the Hogwarts, <laughs> divergence factions trends, and of course into the zodiac and birth order trends. So that's also, but I found that this study has been referenced a lot when talking about can you be this type, can you be that type, um, what percentages of this are that. Uh, according to that Iliamona, it does wake it, break it down by wings. It has the strongest correlations for the five wing six being INTJ, INTP, ISTJ, and ISTP. For five wing four, it has the strongest correlations being INTJ, INTP, INFJ, and ISTP with a close running of an ESTJ, which the E fascinates me for Enneagram 5. I've been told they exist. I just find that, I just find that an interesting study. Maybe I'll explore that in a coming video. I probably will. For the fourth reference from Typology Central, there was an MBTI Enneagram correlation study and the data, it does all nine types, um, but specifically for fives, it puts in first position correlation the INTP, then puts the second correlation as INTJ, 
followed by INFP, and then in fourth is INFJ. If you want to check out any other numbers or see what else falls in there, statistically speaking, according to this data, then check out that um, study down below. Okay. If you are new to the Enneagram, but familiar with Myers-Briggs, or familiar with Myers-Briggs and new to the Enneagram, I will place a card above my head with a video that will give a good introduction to both as soon as I have made that. It is coming soon. Now I wanna hear from you. What interesting combinations do you have? What interesting combinations have you heard of? What other reference points, studies, um, articles do you think that would contribute to this conversation? Please let me know in the comments below. If you have found any of this interesting or helpful, please consider giving me a thumbs up. If you'd like to stay connected, please hit that subscribe button. Please take a look at the videos on your screen now and click on one of those. I will see you in the next video.